A sci-fi movie from 25 years ago is so stunning. This 1998 movie is not only beautifully photographed, there are space wonders in all parts of the movie. The movie is as grand and detailed as any sci-fi movie today. The space battle at the beginning of the movie is very shocking. There's also time travel, alien adventure, and battles against alien monsters. When it was released, it crushed Titanic at the box office. The story begins in the year 2058 due to the increasing population and years of war. Earth's resources are depleted. The Earth is on the verge of collapse and the human race is facing an existential crisis. So all the countries have to unite to find a habitable planet. One day, scientists discovered planet Alpha, but it was too far away. Fortunately, mankind invented the hyperspace engine. It allows ships to enter hyperspace and instantly teleport to faraway places. But before they could turn on the hyperdrive, they had to build stargates at the beginning and the end. If they forced the hyperdrive to start, the ship would be randomly shunted to an unknown star field and be lost in space. By this time, the construction of the Stargate in Earth's orbit had already begun. John is the chief scientist. He's traveling with his family to planet Alpha. He is responsible for guiding the construction of the gate there. But a group of anti-human beings is causing havoc. They sent to thug fighters to attack the gate. One transport was destroyed. Pilot Mark and his colleague Blackie went to intercept it with his skill. Mark quickly shot down one of the enemy planes, but Blackie's plane was targeted by the enemy. His plane was hit by a bullet. Blackie had no choice but to detach the damaged tail pod. It crashes right into another enemy plane. The enemy sabotage plan has been stopped. Soon the Jupiter was ready. The Johns were on board. Since the start date had not yet been constructed, they could only fly on normal engines. The journey will take 10 years. They were accompanied by their pilot Mark. What they don't know is that the anti-human organization has paid off Dr. Smith. Dr. Smith has infiltrated the ship and altered the security droid's programming. He'll activate the sabotage program in a few hours. After all this, Dr. Smith tried to escape, but the organization wants to kill him. The communicator releases an electric current, and Dr. Smith is electrocuted in orbit. Soon it was time to launch. The Johns go into hibernation. The ship ignites successfully and enters space. The Jupiter successfully entered its intended orbit as the launcher was released. Mark set up the program and went into hibernation mode. I don't know how long it took for Dr. Smith to wake up, he realized he had followed the ship into space. At that moment, the robot activated its destruction program. Dr. Smith was dumbfounded. He didn't want to die here with the ship, so he tried to stop the robot. But the remote control has been burned, and there's nothing he can do about it. He had no choice but to wake up John and his family. But John and his family are no match for the robot. At that moment of crisis, the robot suddenly stopped attacking. The youngest son hacked into the robot's control system. He hacked into the robot's control system and put it into remote control mode. Mark also found Dr. Smith hiding in the corner. He knew what Dr. Smith had done. However, the ship's control system was severely damaged. This caused the ship to go off course and be captured by the sun's gravity. The Jupiter spacecraft went off course and was captured by the sun's gravity. Its control systems were damaged. They're seeing the shields cracking. Before long, it would be burned to the ground. At this point, John had no choice. He had no choice but to power the hyperdrive through the sun. As the energy pours in, the hyperdrive is activated. The ship dives headfirst into the sun. Everyone comes to a standstill. At the same time, in another part of the universe, the ship breaks out of the sky. It appeared in a completely new part of the universe. And that's when John had time to deal with the doctor. But the good John didn't kill the doctor. He just locked him up. By now, the ship was completely lost in space, drifting around aimlessly. Just then, a giant bubble appeared in front of us. There's a spaceship inside. Mark pilots the ship into the bubble. Up close, they realize they've never seen anything like it. But the writing on the hull says it's also a human ship. But the distress signals they send out go unanswered. So John decided to land on the ship to find out what was going on. Dr. Smith was taken along with him. Along the way, they found many strange things. First, strange blue ink sacks on the bulkheads, then bullet holes in the walls. Looks like there was a gunfight here. John opens the captain's log. Instead, the captain claims he's here to rescue John's family. The captain is the same old black man who fought alongside Mark, but he looks like he's aged a couple of decades. What's strange is that they've only been lost for a day. How did the rescue ship find them already? What's even stranger is that the greenery in the ship is already so lush. It looks like it's been growing like crazy for decades. After catching a space pet from the forest, the people were surprised to find out one thing. The monkey had evolved to change color at will. At that moment, the egg nest in the cabin suddenly began to wriggle. Countless alien spiders emerged from their cocoons. Their teeth and fans are clearly not from Earth. Bullets bounced off their bodies. My son immediately switched to advanced control mode. He controls the robots through holograms to cover the others' retreat. These alien spiders not only attacked humans, 
they even attack their wounded companions. Mark puts on his protective gear. He's guarding the exit. Unexpectedly, the spiders melted down and rushed out. In the panic, Dr. Smith was scratched on the back by the spiders. They had no choice but to have the robot block the doorway. This gave them a chance to escape back to the Jupiter. But the robot didn't last long. Soon it's a goner. Mac activated the ship and fired his missiles at the same time. The missile destroys the rescue ship and the alien spire. But the explosion was too fast. The shockwave propelled the Jupiter to a nearby uncharted planet. The Jupiter spacecraft was propelled into the unknown by a shockwave. It had just entered the atmosphere when it was struck by lightning. The ship loses control and almost crashes into a mountain. The decelerator was opened, but the ship slammed sharply into the ground. It slides for a while and then falls off a cliff. Luckily, the ship is strong enough. It finally comes to rest on the ice, but the nuclear fuel cells are running low. The ship doesn't have enough fuel to get out of the atmosphere. They had no choice but to spend the night on the Frausine planet. The next day, just as the shields open, they found a giant bubble. Scans revealed a nuclear reactor in the center of the bubble. There's enough energy inside to get them back into space. John thinks that this bubble should be the same as the one found in space. There's a separate dimension within it. If they enter the bubble, they can't travel to the future. But in order to get the fuel, John and Mark decided to risk entering the bubble. The rest of the team repaired the damage to the ship. The youngest son stayed on board to reorganize his robot. This time, he upgraded the robot's operating system to make itself aware. Just as John and Mark enter, they were attacked. And they were attacked by the very robot his son had repaired. John woke up again. A man with a disheveled face appears. He claims to be John's future son. John didn't believe him at first. But when he saw that everything here looked just like the Jupiter spacecraft, then he believed it. It turns out that after John and the others died, his son kept researching. He transformed the hyperspace engine into a time machine. The operation of the time machine also created the current blue bubble. The son wanted to go back to Earth decades ago and prevent his family from boarding the Jupiter. But this time, Tunnel is powerful and unreliable. It's still expanding and could tear the planet apart at any moment. And on the ship at the same time, Dr. Smith tricked his young son into releasing him. The youngest son is worried about his father and asks Dr. Smith to take him to save him. The two of them entered the bubble and arrived at the Jupiter ship decades later. The youngest son is so innocent that he gives him the gun in his hand. Now the doctor is revealed, and he takes the son hostage to enter the ship. The doctor wants to trade him for the time machine. What he didn't realize was that he had survived all those years, but after being scratched by the spider, the doctor's body mutated. He became what he is now. For years he pretended to be a changed man. Doctor. He leaves with John's son. When he saw his ungrateful self back then, he raised his hand and sent him flying. Then he ordered the robots to lock up John and the others. The youngest son looked at the robot he had repaired. He tried to awaken his sense of self, and he succeeded. The robot had its own judgment. It removed the controls and let them out. When they got out, they split up. John went for the fuel rods. John went for the fuel rods, and Mark took his young son back to the ship. But on the way back, Mark saved Dr. Smith and brought him back to the ship with him. At the same time, his future son was debunking the time tunnel. When he was done, the mutated Dr. Smith was no longer in hiding. He admitted that he was the one who killed John's family decades ago. The reason why he didn't kill his youngest son was because he wanted to use him to build the time tunnel. Now that the time is right, he's revealed himself. Dr. Mutant removes his coat to reveal his true form. He believes that he is now no longer human. But God, inside his belly, he has spawned countless baby spiders. He can't use the time tunnel to return to Earth. There he can't sow his offspring to his heart's content. He fed on humans and became the master of the world. As for John's son, he was useless. Doctor, Mutant threw him into the tunnel. At that moment, John also arrived here. He fought with Doctor. Mutant with his own weapon, although John was no match for the doctor, but it took the opportunity to cut the doctor's parents. These spiders have a special characteristic. They eat their wounded companions. Countless small spiders emerged from the wounds. They saw the doctor as a wounded man and kept on buying. John took the opportunity to pounce on him. The doctor fell right onto the plasma belt and was torn to pieces. That's when John realized his son wasn't dead. John realized his son wasn't dead and he was hanging from a pipe. John rushed to get him out. I now. The time tunnel had been activated. The energy could tear the planet apart at any moment. The people on board had to start their engines to evacuate. But the ship is low on fuel. They still couldn't make it out of the atmosphere. Shortly after takeoff, the ship is hit by debris. The ship disintegrated in midair. John was devastated by the sight. His son knew that time travel was the only option left to save his family. So he set the travel time to a few minutes ago on the Jupiter. And then he sent his father into the time tunnel. The father was reunited with his family. But the tunnel 
only has enough energy for one person to travel through at once. The future son stayed in the future. Now the family has been reunited, but they still couldn't fly through the atmosphere. So John decided to cross the planet when it exploded. The ship drilled through the cracks in the planet and flew through the Earth's crust under the force of gravity. With Mark's excellent piloting skills, the ship survived every crisis. The ship successfully flew into space just seconds before the planet exploded. And that's the end of the movie. Even now, this movie, which was made more than 20 years ago, is still a great movie. It's as good as any sci-fi movie ever made.